Arrhenius was one of the first to develop a theory of how humans could affect the global climate system, the theory now known as the greenhouse effect. Gases in the atmosphere allow shortwave solar radiation through to reach the Earth's surface, which heats it up. Energy is then re-emitted in the form of longwave radiation. This longwave radiation is trapped by the same gases which allow the shortwave radiation to pass. One of these key gases is carbon dioxide. So, have humans really had a significant impact on the climate? Has the greenhouse effect, enhanced by humans adding more carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, really brought about an increase in global temperatures? One way to find out is to compare modern data with older measurements. This is BT number one, Board of Trade number one, which was the first thermometer of the Met Office in the 1850s. It was calibrated accurately to within about 0.1 of a degree, plus or minus 1 0.1 of a degree. And this would have been sent out to various places around the country so that they could then record accurately the, the temperatures for us in the Met Office. These would have been sent to the various places and then they would have sent their data into the Met Office and we would have started to plot them on these charts. And this is the chart for May the 23rd, 1867. Different charts that we have nowadays. This chart here has the various weather observations from around the country, uh, like Portsmouth, London here. London, the temperature was 42 degrees Fahrenheit. The pressure was 30.04 inches and there was a northerly wind. These charts, I say, started in 1867 and we now have probably about a million charts going from 1867 right to the present day. The millions of bits of data which reach the Met Office each day allow us to forecast the weather. But they also provide extensive evidence of changes in climate over the last century. The detailed records of the last century do show variation in surface temperatures. But is this change significant? Well, we only have a good record of global climate extending back around 100 years. We know over that period that there's been warming of around half a degree Celsius, but we're not sure what happened before that point. What happened 200 years ago? What happened 300 years ago? What happened 1,000 years ago? So it's extremely important that we extend our records back further in time because then we'll find out whether this recent warming trend is a new phenomenon, in which case we may well be responsible, or whether it's part of a longer term trend, in which case it's more likely that it's a natural change, or at least part of it is a natural change in climate. Is it possible that the climate was changing before humans created industrial pollution? We're lucky to have a very interesting diary from Norwich, which was made by um, a local miller uh, in the centre of Norwich, more or less, and he kept a regular... We need more data. But how can we get data for periods before humans kept these detailed and systematic records? I can mention straight away, 1601, very, very cold over a very large area of the Northern Hemisphere. 1642, 1695, and a few years after that. 1032 was very, very cold, and we can maybe 1628 BC was majorly cold. The best systematic and detailed human records take us back only a few hundred years to the invention of reliable scientific instruments. So how do you get a detailed and long-term record? If scientists can't rely on human archives, they have to look to other natural sources of data. What you can see here now are wide and narrow rings. You can see quite clearly the year-to-year -year growth. What this tells us is really when the tree was growing well and when it was growing poorly. But a tree that's living today can take you back only a few hundred years. This is surely no advantage over the human records. Let me illustrate it with a piece of oak which was cut down in this region. And we know that the year it was cut down it was 1983, and by measuring the rings back, we know there are 250, and this takes us back into the 1700s. 
the beauty of tree rings in this area, or in any area where there's a strong seasonality of climate, is that they only produce one annual ring, clearly, each year, and that allows us to build a unique, absolute scale of measurement. Now, once we've got back in this sample, for example, and many more like it, to the 1700s, we can take another piece of wood, like this one, which may well have come from a, an old building um, or even a very old dead tree, and we can do a similar measurement of the annual rings. And by matching this pattern of rings, the changes from year to year, with the changes in the original sample, provided we've got enough of an overlap, we can get a unique position, a unique match, which is, allows us to take this scale right back another 100, 200 years, say, and by using even older samples, such as this piece of oak, which came out of a German bog and is, in fact, 2,500 years old, we can continue this record back even to earlier millennia. So given a several thousand year series, and in fact in some parts of Europe, these series have been able to be extended back even 8,000 years and more. We then ask the obvious question, what can we tell about the past climate in this record? Detailed analysis of the distances between the rings, their thickness and density provides a wide range of climate information. You can find summer temperature. In some regions, you can reconstruct annual temperatures. Simple rainfall during the growing season, rainfall even in the winter season. Because of the indirect relationships between temperature and rainfall, which actually control the tree growth, we can reconstruct pressure data, uh, because it's that pressure data which controls those primary climate variables. Um, we can even reconstruct sunshine records. The important thing is, though, that you can't get all of this information from the same trees in the same areas. The major bits of work that goes on in dendroclimatology is the sorting out of the different signals that the trees contain and then using sensible statistics to try and reliably reconstruct that information back in time. So natural sources of climate data, like tree rings, show that climate has changed, at least on land. And these extended records are showing that climate has undergone significant and occasionally abrupt change over thousands of years before humans kept systematic records. Unfortunately, tree rings can take us back only to the last glacial period, when climate warming allowed the trees to start growing. But a few thousand years of tree ring data is nothing compared to over four billion years of the Earth's history. Thank <laughs> you.